have traveled to the middle of nowhere many times in California, but this, well, this place is desolate and hot. You uh, better get all your text messages and calls in because there is no service out here. Absolutely none. At the westernmost edge of Death Valley, just before the National Park entrance, there's a desert colony of sorts, known as Darwin. As you make your way into town, you're welcomed by a barrage of sunburnt shacks and abandoned trailer homes. At first, it looks like a ghost town, but I can assure you, people do live here. This is Larry the Lifeguard, one of about 40 people who live in Darwin. And if you want to know why people call him Larry the Lifeguard, you'll just have to follow him to his house, which is a little hard to see. So Larry, where, where is your house at? I don't know. I have trouble finding it myself sometimes. <laughs> it's troubling to find because like a number of Larry's neighbors, he lives underground. What would we technically be standing on right here? The dining room table. Hidden under some trees and several feet of dirt is Larry the Lifeguard's 2,000 square foot desert oasis. And that helps you keep cool. Don't you feel it? It's, it's way cooler <laughs> underground. Yeah. Oh. According to Larry, it's about 20 to 30 degrees cooler underground, and this is where he likes to explain his nickname. Are you a real lifeguard? 31 years. <laughs> where? There's not much water around here. No, the beaches in Santa Monica and Venice. Because he loves the desert, Larry bought some cheap land in Darwin, and when he was young, started building a vacation home out of recycled materials. Where'd you get these timbers? Those are parts of the Santa Monica Pier. Larry admits he isn't the first to come up with the idea of living underground. Old silver miners used to dig holes in the hillside to escape the heat. 1875, I think. There were 4,000 people living around here. Miners didn't mind living in holes in the ground. Darwin was a silver mine named after Darwin French, a prospector who originally was searching for a mythical mine. He was looking for the Lost Gunside Mine, but what he found was the waterfall. And that was, and this area was named after him. That waterfall is Darwin Falls, one of the few water sources in Death Valley. And that water supported all the mining operations in Darwin. This was the second largest silver strike around here. The old mine in town is still somewhat operational, but these days, artists and retirees outnumber the miners. You carved this? This is carved, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like you were like hammered? Yeah, I have some other ones out here in the yard. <laughs> Drive around town and you'll see a number of Jim Hunnold sculptures, along with other paintings and oddities. There's some chard here, some tomatoes. And if you're looking for some fresh greens for your salad, stop by the Darwin Community Garden to talk to Tamara Myers, who retired from teaching in Santa Cruz to garden in the desert and get away from it all. I was just done with my life. I mean, with that life, not with my life, but with, I wanted a big change. Darwin may be hot, dry, and desolate, but that's how the people here like it. And if you find yourself visiting Darwin, I think you'll like it too as long as you get here before the heat of the day sets in. From the little desert town of Darwin, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. Man, it is hot out here. Whew.